Hello, my name is George Martin. I'm a board-certified neurological surgeon in El Paso, Texas. Uh, I uh, did my undergraduate work at uh, Cornell University in New York, followed by my medical school at uh, University of Florida College of Medicine in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, I was lucky enough to do a neurosurgery residency at the Emory University Hospitals in Atlanta, Georgia. I was exposed to a number of great uh, neurosurgeons, Dr. George Tyndall, Dr. Dan Barrow, uh, legendary spine surgeons, Dr. Regis Hay, Dr. Eric Woodard. Uh, and I learned a great deal from them, and they taught me basically how to take care of patients as they were my own family. Uh, after that, I did a, a year of spinal reconstructive surgery and minimally invasive surgery spinal fellowship at the University of South Florida in Tampa under Dr. David Cahill. My favorite part of, of my job is basically having the ability to touch a person's life. Uh, they usually come to see me when they're in pain and they are unable to enjoy life and being able to put people back to doing what they wanted to do before to get them better, get them back with their families, get them back enjoying life, to, to impact everyone's life that I see in such a positive manner, that's, that's the best thing about my job. My uh, philosophy about taking care of patients is a little complex, but a little simple. Um, every patient is an individual, and every individual has certain problems. Um, from a surgeon standpoint, there's an anatomical problem uh, that gives them certain symptoms. Um, but not every patient who walks into my office, in fact, the vast majority of patients, uh, we don't recommend surgery for. Uh, my philosophy is the, the right patient, the right time, and the right procedure. Uh, the right patient is, is, is this patient gonna get better with surgery? If they're not gonna get better with surgery, then we don't operate on them. The right time means that the patient's been through a significant amount of conservative treatment, physical therapy, injections, uh, other treatments in order to try to get them better. If they're not better, then they will need a surgical procedure to make them better. And then the right procedure. Uh, although uh, the right procedure may not be the smallest minimally invasive surgery, uh, sometimes it involves something that's a little bit more um, involved. But the most important thing is the outcome. Um, a patient needs the best outcome possible, and sometimes it means a little bit larger surgery or a little bit longer surgery. With the technologic advancements that have happened in the last five to 10 years, we're able to do fusions with much smaller incisions. Uh, we can do them in, uh, at times in outpatient settings. Uh, we're able to use uh, newest technology, uh, including robotics, in order to uh, speed the healing and to cut down on the complications from surgery. And all these advancements have gone on within the last five to 10 years, and we're continuing to push back the frontiers uh, of medicine on a yearly basis. Um, I, um, being a neurosurgeon and being around nerves and the spinal cord, one of my expertise is, is cervical spine surgery, uh, cervical disc replacements, cervical corpectomies, cervical uh, discectomies. Uh, we probably are one of the largest providers in the Southwest for those types of surgeries. And our outcomes uh, continue to be excellent. One of the common uh, misgivings I hear about, first of all, is sometimes it's even hard to get patients into the office to see a surgeon because they feel that once they see a surgeon, they're always going to recommend surgery. I'd say three quarters of the patients who come and see me, we don't recommend surgery for them. Uh, another thing is, is that, again, the safety factor. Um, everyone has a story about an uncle or an aunt who was paralyzed with spinal surgery. And I tell them, now it's it's 2018, we have uh, techniques, we have robotic techniques that we use, we have spinal cord monitoring interoperatively, we have all of these safety and backup systems that we use uh, to make surgery safer. And our, safer, our surgery is so much safer now than it was five, even 10, 20 years ago. It's, it's unimaginable. The risk of uh, permanent neurological damage during a uh, spinal surgery that, that uh, we do is less than 1%. I had, uh, two or three years ago, I had a patient who came to see me. Um, she was a very sweet lady. Uh, her daughter brought her in in a wheelchair, and I asked her, why are you in a wheelchair? And she said, I can't walk. I haven't walked for six months. And uh, they give me the MRI scan, and, and I put it up, and she's got a, a very large tumor in the middle of her spinal canal that's pressing on her spinal cord. And I tell her, well, you know, I'm sorry. This is a, a very serious problem. Um, we need to take it out 
in order to get you better. You know, our, our literature states that if someone hasn't walked for three days, the odds of them walking at all are slim to none. But we went, we, we went, took her to surgery, we were able to completely remove the tumor. Um, um, I saw her in the hospital, uh, her legs were still weak at that time. Um, I see all my patients back at four weeks. She came back in to the office in her wheelchair. And then I turned around to grab my reflex hammer and she had stood up and walked right in front of me. And uh, just seeing her get up and walk and how happy she was and her family, where they were, her dog, granddaughters were crying. It, it was something that, that, that really moved me and, and will be with me for the rest of my life.